Hi everyone, welcome to Table for Two. I am the Elusive Bigfoot. And I'm Wednesday. And today we are covering our top five picks in no particular order for gateway games. Would you like to talk about gateway games? Gateway games are games for people that aren't particularly in the hobby. You're introducing them to board gaming, mm -hmm. uh, trying to make it easier for them to get started. I guess that's a, a good description of gateway game. Yeah, that's a great one. I also, when I wrote my list, was looking at it from the perspective of maybe their perspective or their experience is Monopoly or Parcheesi or something that's a bit older that they haven't you know, really experienced any of the contemporary games. So what is a game that would be easy for them to understand that I could explain quickly and would be um, inviting for them to try out some other games? Sounds good. Okay. So what's your number uh, one, not in any particular order, or do you have? I have a few honorable a mentions. A few honorable mentions. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So the first one I have is So Clover. Love this game. It is a word game for those people who are really into words. Um, they would like this. What you do is you have a plastic clover and you take these little squares and then you're going to put them on the different petals of the clover and the word you're going to write is going to connect these two words together then you'll write a word that connects these two words together and so on and goes around and it's a lot of fun it's a great co-op type of game that is so clover one of my honorable mentions and over here oh Another one. Would you like another honorable mention? We would like another honorable mention. <laughs> okay. Another honorable mention I have, which has come up several times, I'll take that band off of that, is Forbidden Island. This is a game where you are placing tiles to represent an island, different parts of the island, and periodically the island will start to sink. And you want to grab the treasure before the island sinks completely and you can't get to it. So that is Forbidden Island. This is all, Forbidden Island is also good because for many people, they haven't played a co-op game before. Yes. And that's a great one, I think, to, right. to start people out on. I like co-op games for gateways because then everyone is in it to win it together. There's not a lot of pressure of like, you know, I'm alone right now. I don't know what else to do. So I like those. Um, my, last, uh, my last honorable mention is horrified this is the universal monster edition there's another edition that has american monsters both are great i think that this appeals to the general public more because they can really identify with dracula or the creature from the black lagoon or the bride of frankenstein and frankenstein and so on you have a map of a town and you're trying to get the monsters they each have their own objective it's like a mini puzzle for each monster you're trying to satisfy that while you're traveling around the town trying to take the innocent villagers to their destination and get some perk cards that will help you as you're rolling dice to see whether or not you can evade the attack of the monsters that is horrified all right <laughs> so now we're on to our top five now we're each. on to the top five top five each of gateway games mm -hmm. would you like to go first i'll go first okay start with the tiny one called Roll For It, right? Roll For It is dice and cards. Um, it's a really easy game to learn. It's fun to play. Two to four players. Well, let's be honest. Even though it says that, we have found it to be very successful. If you have enough sets of dice, you can just keep on going. Yeah, and it comes with these great little tiny dice that really go well with the game. Mm -hmm. And what, what you're doing in Roll For It is there are cards out on the table, face up, and you have to try to match your dice to the dice on the that are printed on the cards. And so everybody's bidding on a card. As soon as you fulfill that card, it's yours and you get the points. So that's a roll for it. It's really easy for beginners to understand, even if they've never played a complicated game before. This is very easy to understand, match the picture, get the points. Great. Um, my next game is a small game called Floriferous. And I don't know if you can see it or if it's kind of glary. It might help a little bit. So what it is, is you have a garden 
and you're going to look at moving your tokens across the path and you're going to select from each column one card and you're either going to select for maybe its color or what type of a flower it is depending on what objectives you want to fulfill and then after you get those and you lay your cards out you're going to come back the other way so you can either go for a flower or you can go for what type of points do you want to secure um, it's a beautiful game has many objectives it's a very fast game that is floriferous All right. my next game up for a gateway game is point salad point salad is a fun game two to six players it's really easy to learn. So the entire deck of cards has vegetables on one side mm -hmm. and points for vegetables on the other side. So you'll either take a card as a vegetable or take a card as a point counter, right? So I might get a point counter that says, as long as I have more than five carrots, I get a certain amount of points. If I don't have any onions, I get a certain amount of points. I'll lose points if I have any tomatoes, things like that. Mm -hmm. So every card is a little bit different. And it's, like I said, really easy to play, really easy to learn. Uh, and it's vegetables. It's very fun. <laughs> points out. You made vegetables sound fun. <laughs> Kids, vegetables are fun. <laughs> All right. My next game um, is a game I've mentioned before. I think it was in the co-op that I mention it. It is Micro Macro, the uh, crime city. You have a huge, huge black and white map of um, art, line drawing art. And the pictures are very small. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve the mystery puzzle of like almost like a whodunit or how did it happen? So they do give you a magnifying glass. There's multiple scenes that you get to solve. A lot of fun. And it's Micro Macro. All right, my next game up is another game we've mentioned in other lists. Soro. Got to make sure I have it the right way up here. Soro. This, uh, this box is for Soro of the Seas, which is a separate game or an, an addition or an, an expansion. But both this one and the original Soro are great gateway games, especially the original Soro. You're just laying down tiles, moving your marker along the path that's on the tile, you try not to run off the board. So it's a little like putting a puzzle together in a way so that your piece doesn't run off the board. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful artwork, Soto. All right, my next game is called Project L. So this game is, uh, I guess it would be similar to explaining, it's not Tetris because it's just one, sh one um, pattern that you wanna create from teeny tiny tiles, whether they are little squares or some rectangles or a zigzag shape. And you want to fill in a, a recessed board with all and make, make it uh, fill it with all the different tiles that you've got. You'll get bonus tiles from doing that or points. And it's, it's kind of relaxing, I find. And I really love the feel of the plastic tiles. That is Project L. And that has that same putting a puzzle together kind of feel. It does. It does. So if you're a puzzle putter together, mm -hmm. that's a great game. Right, my next game up is Dixit, three to six players. Mm, I love that game. So this uh, this game is interesting in that it's all artwork. All mm -hmm. the cards have artwork on them, and somebody will choose a word mm -hmm. that has to do with a card. You know, I might say I, I might uh, say the words. Well, let's take the cover for instance. Okay. That's a wild cover. Yeah. What would you, what kind of description could you get? So you want to give a description that's not too specific because you want all but one person to guess which is your card, kind of like apples to apples. So for this, for this picture on here, if this was on my card, I might say Lonesome Road or something like mm -hmm. that. And then everyone else would choose a card out of their hands that they think looks like Lonesome Road. Mm -hmm. They would give it to me and mix them all together and we lay them out on the board. And everybody votes on which one is the real mm -hmm. Lonesome Road. So I want to think, I want to make my guess so good, my fake guess, that people will vote for mine. Right. But the, the trick is that you don't want everybody to vote for your card. 
because if everybody votes for your cards, you don't get points. Well, um, if you're the original yeah, if card. You're the original. So, yeah. so we don't, if you're the original card guesser you, or card stater, you don't want to have everybody guess your card. You want everybody but one person right. to guess your card. And the artwork has a twist to it. So you think it looks like one thing. And then when you look deeper at the art, it's like, that's not what it is. Like there was one thing where I thought all, for the longest time that it was a picture of a clamshell. And it turns out it was a bassinet left alone in a forest. So the art always has just a slight twist to it. And that's Dixit. Okay. My next game is Potion Explosion. And one of the things that I like about this game is that kids love this game because you're going to play with marbles. What you're doing is you're removing one marble that's in a track at an incline so they slide forward. And when you remove that marble, the marbles that collide together, if they match, you get to take all those. So there could be a chain reaction. Let's suppose that I pull out a blue marble and there are two yellow on either side and they collide. Now I get to take those two yellows. And let's suppose on either side of that, there might have been red or black. Well, I get to take everything that keeps colliding. So there could be a chain reaction if you plan it out. Then you'll fill these beakers with your marbles to create patterns that have been set. Once you create those patterns of the, the potions, you get to take or drink that potion and that will give you a certain benefit that you can use to get other marbles. That is potion explosion. All right, my last one up for gateway game is Ticket to Ride. All right. That's a great classic. Ticket to Ride is two to five players. As you might guess from the cover, it's a train game. Um, it's sort of become an American family household classic game. Um, you're putting together train routes of plastic trains, in this case across the United States. They have other maps as well, though, Europe, India, all kinds of stuff. All different countries. All kinds of stuff. But you get points for completing your route of plastic trains. And there's some strategy to collecting cards, spending the cards on your trains, and then uh, scoring points based on the trains that you put down. Um, I think this is a great gateway game because it has that toy factor. Mm -hmm. Playing with the plastic trains. Yeah. And uh, also, it just looks nice on the table. Uh, you can sit around with the family or some friends, spend an hour and a half playing this, and uh, it's very fun. Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride. All right, my last game is a little on the big side. And it is Fireball Island. <laughs> this game is so much fun. And if when you were a kid, you were into games that had... Um, like pieces that would go around a volcano or your 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 family or your friends are used to moving, you know, like roll a die, move some more, do what it says. They might like this. What you're trying to do is as you're going around Fireball Island, you're trying to collect these pictures, like you're taking um, a picture of, or a postcard while you're in a, view, uh, a lookout point. And meanwhile, the volcano is going to be spitting out these orange marbles like fireballs and rolling down. If it hits you, you go sliding down. You could lose some things. Meanwhile, all the players are running around trying to get treasures as they're going because the first person to collect treasures and get back to the boat and take off and has the most points is going to win. So, um, so much fun to set up. It just reminds me of being a kid again. That is Fireball Island, the Curse of Volcar. It's a game and it's a toy. It is. If you ever saw those games when we were kids and they always have a kid on the front who's making an excited face while he's playing it, you know, like that. And this is that game. Yeah. So um, That's actually um, from Restoration Games. They brought it back. So it is a game that did come probably from the 80s. Yeah, you will make that face while you're playing the game. Yeah, so it's fun. It's very fun. All right. So... That was our top five in no particular order of our favorite gateway games. Let us know in the comments what are your favorite gateway games. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, on behalf of Table for Two, I'm Onesie. I'm the Elusive Bigfoot. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.